And the movie we're going to be talking about is Troll 2 from 1990, which was directed by Claudio Fragrasso, um, who never really went on to do anything beyond that, as far as I'm aware. Which um, is a surprise. Yeah. And the same could be said for the, the actors in the movie, because they don't even have portraits on IMDb, because none of them have done anything before or after this movie. I don't know where to start with this one. Um, <laughs> I guess we could just start with how creepy the family is overall. <laughs> okay. From uh, the beginning. Well, let's let's set, set a little background for this. Um, the plot of the movie is that a small child named Joshua is about to go, go on a vacation with his family, a road trip, to a place called Nilbog. Nilbog. Um, and uh, just as a, a quick aside, he's haunted by the, his, his the, dead grandfather. the spirit of his dead grandfather, uh, which the mom alludes he's going to some sort of like therapist about this, but yeah. she's pretty okay with just him going on this trip, even though he's completely psychotic. Yeah, and, and the trip, the town has something to do with farming heritage, <laughs> which is never really touched upon, the dad just likes and to say. You never actually see any yeah. farms in this place. There's yeah. there's no farmland. It's kind of just looks like a desert town in the hills. A little bit hills have eyes. Yeah. Uh, well, when, when the grandfather, the start of the movie with the grandfather telling the kid Joshua okay, yeah. the, the story in the, bed. The movie opens with the grandfather, a heartwarming scene of grandfather telling a story to Joshua as he's going to sleep about <laughs> goblins. Ter- terrifying, uh, terrifying night. There's, 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 another, there's another thing to note, is that it's called Troll, but there are only goblins. There are no trolls in this movie. I, I don't know what the differentiation is between the two of those. But I, I don't either, but <laughs> yeah, they call them goblins all throughout the movie. They make the a movie. point to say yeah. that they are goblins. Um, so, Grandpa's telling a heartwarming tale of goblins eating someone alive. And somebody who's in a terrible outfit, like... Yeah, he looks like, Rob, like poor man's Robin Hood or yeah, something. Yeah, but like like middle school <laughs> theater costume in South Central L.A. where they don't have a very big budget. It, it appeared to be made out of felt yes. or something. And, and he somehow, as a full-grown man, they can't outrun midgets. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> the pack of trolls, or uh, goblins, sorry... <laughs> that are chasing this man in the fairy tale are not what take him down. It's the fact that he does a completely inexplicable <laughs> somersault. somersault. On grass, plush, green grass. Then blood, blood starts spewing from his forehead. Yeah, and, like he uh, his head on plush, green and grass. That, that's what does him in. But then he he's knocked out and awakes to a beautiful woman. Well, how this, the story describes her is a beautiful woman <laughs> with very fake freckles. So this lady has freckles that look like someone took like a mascara. And, yeah, and just know, poked just her in the poked face. Poked her in the face. They're not even. I mean, I don't know how hard it is to just get an actress yeah. that has freckles, freckles, or just say you know freckles aren't really that important yeah. in this story. They so, weren't important and, at all. Why bother going out of your way to make them look completely yeah. idiotic? But the, the and then she proceeds to feed him seafoam seafoam green colored pudding. Yeah, Nickelodeon lumpy, slime. Lumpy, yes, lumpy pudding, like. Yeah, that yak, yak stuff. Um, and he's just like, oh, yeah, this tastes delicious. And he just slurps it right up. The, the important underlying rule of goblins here is the fact that they are vegetarians. Yes. Which it seems throughout this movie, I, I don't know if this director has, has it out for vegetarians or has something against, maybe his ex-wife is a vegetarian maybe. or something. But it, the goblins are vegetarians, and they're... They are literally saying vegetarians are monsters. Yeah, they they are saying that vegetarians are monsters and that meat is the savior. Processed salty meats. So rather than eating fruits and vegetables and grains and such like a vegetarian would, these goblins turn humans into plants and then eat them. them. Even though they they live in the woods, which is probably full of, I don't know, berries or... All types of vegetation. It's a fa- they say it's a farmland. Why yeah. don't they just start a farm and rather than going out of their way to... Anyways. Yeah, no, instead they decide to turn people into plants. Well, partial plants, not even full plants. Partial plants. And then eat them. But yeah, so she proceeds to feed him this green pudding. And then green cough medicine, like Vic's cough medicine, starts to pour from his forehead and all down his face. There, there's a great scene in the beginning. At, okay, the, this, this fairy tale that's being told by Grandpa is broken up when the mom bursts into the room and Grandpa mysteriously disappears. And she... That, that, that's another thing about this movie is everybody... Half the lines of dialogue in this movie 
just specifically explain backstory explain to the, to the point of, of complete annoyance. Oh, Grandpa died six months ago. Remember, we're taking you to the therapist, and you're not supposed to think he exists anymore because and he died. And we're going on vacation. And we're about to go on a trip uh, to Nilbog, to the yeah. farmlands, for no reason, and I'm going to explain we're everything. Tomorrow. And and another thing is this director, cinematographer, who are probably the same person because I don't think they had that much of a no. budget, yeah. has a strange fixation on the mother in this movie's eyes. Her and, expressionless, cold. Eyes. She never blinks. I, I think never. towards the end I saw her blink once. and th- She just has these pale blue eyes, and she always looks really disappointed in everybody. Yes. They have reaction shots of mom with this just blank, disappointed, dejected, depressed look on her face. The extent, of her, the extent of, her, of her expressions throughout the movie is whether or not her mouth is open or closed or her eyes are open. Nothing else. She doesn't do anything else. Before they go to this place, Nilbog, there's a strange subplot with the the boy's uh, Joshua's older sister. I don't know what her name is. Not that it really matters. Yeah, it doesn't that much, really matter. Where she has this strange, kind of creepy boyfriend, and she who breaks this, in on her sweatily working yeah, out. There's an '80s workout scene. Yes. Um, She's wearing practically a one-piece bathing suit, lifting weights. <laughs> Her room is kind of a slice of, of the 80s. Yeah. She's got she's got all her posters of, of all the 80s icons, and she's wearing spandex, bench pressing for for presumably about a half hour. Yes, I, I, just bench pressing <laughs> straight, and that's it. Um, anyways, there's a strange subplot where the girl's boyfriend is going to go on the trip, and she decides... I, it's either he picks his friends or he picks yeah. her. And but she just, says she says, "Oh, if my father caught you in here, he would he would kill you and eat your nuts." Well, that's kind of creepy that he would eat the boyfriend's <laughs> nuts. But that's what she says. So uh, they have kind of a strange relationship dynamic going on here. It, he has either friends or a girlfriend, and there is no middle ground. And the family doesn't like him because his friends are stupid. Yeah, he, he's he's good, a good for nothing freak. Yeah. Anyways. <laughs> We aren't even to the, the main part of the story no, here. No, not even. So they go to this town, Nilbog, and are apparently doing a house exchange type thing where they give the people keys and stay in their farmhouse, and then those people go and, and stay, stay in their stay house. Stay in their house. <laughs> the, fam- the family, when they get there, is extremely creepy. Like, they stand in front of the farmhouse, and they go to hand them the keys, and the family the family who lives in Nilbog decides that they're just going to walk away. Wow. They ha- everyone in this town has strange... Clover, allegedly clover-shaped scars on their face. They just look like blobs to me. Yeah. Um, so they go into the house, and the first thing they see is all this food laid out. Well, before that, the kid in the back of the truck is the family from Nilbog is leaving. Oh, yeah, yeah, throws yeah. A, throws a softball to the boy, Joshua, the main, the main character. Throws a softball to him that says, Eat before we eat you. <laughs> just written on it in green slime. Like... The kid didn't think to show that to his parents. He just like, oh, whatever, and tosses it to the side. Like, so the, the the family's last name is Waits. So the, the Waits family goes into the house, and there's this huge spread of food, which is pretty much all just different types of cakes, cakes and then yes. pitchers of juice, I and guess. And like biscuits with but frosting on top. Everything is green, and there's corn on the cob. There's well, green, green, green and red. It's all uh, just weird colors. Predominantly so, yeah, green. Yeah, mostly green. Just like in Grandpa's little flashback story yeah. thing that he has, so there's there's green shit on the on the corn on the cob. Yeah, it, it, just like frosting. The sister's like, like oh, looks pretty good. And Major she, majority of the film's budget went to frosting. Yeah. Like she, it's on she, she picks up this corn with this green shit on it. It's like oh, I'm gonna take a bite of this. Yeah. And there's there's green cake, green juice, and then there's some red things. I guess just to have a nice compliment. Uh, are those complimentary colors? Yeah, I, it's a yeah, nice color yeah, palette of yeah. food. Um, Grandpa appears, or the ghost of Grandpa, or, or, there, or there's some sort of hallucination yeah. by Joshua, um, th- tells them not to eat the food because it's goblin food. I, I guess it's, it's food that turns them hurt. into vegetables or whatever. And, and that's another thing. Aside from the weird stab at vegetarianism, there seems to be this underlying theme throughout this movie of Joshua being like a, a closet anorexic or something. Yeah. Because he doesn't want to eat food ever. The whole theme is, Joshua, do not eat food. You can't eat. Food will kill you. And that's what Grandpa always pops up and tells him. Yeah. And, and Grandpa tells him some really sadistic and strange things to do. And yes. and, and somehow Grandpa stops time. Grandpa has the power to stop time, yeah. but only for 30 seconds. 30 seconds, yeah. And he, he, just says, snaps his he says, Joshua, you have 30 seconds to solve how to keep your family from eating this food. 
And Joshua spends about 45 <laughs> seconds trying to figure the it first, out. The first 45 <laughs> seconds, he has this stupid look on his face just and just walks around, around the, the table. table. Staring and at his frozen face. Then Joshua's big solution is to stand up on the table and piss on everything. And piss all over the food. The next scene it all cuts over. to them cleaning up the food and the dad puts him up in his room or the he room he's staying him, in. He carries him up and the, the mom yells the whole way as the dad's carrying him up through. She's yelling, don't hit him! Don't hit him! <laughs> so you think the dad might have some violent tendencies. But they get up into the room and the dad's just all passive aggressive about it. And is like taking it like a challenge, talking about how if the son's going to go on a hunger strike, he can play that game because yeah. he was poor as a kid and didn't have food More as it back was. backstory. Yeah. Uh, rather than saying, hey, uh, don't piss on our food, he <laughs> says, okay, you want to have a hunger strike? I-, I accept that challenge. And he tightens up his belt. Yeah, he goes, I'm tightening my belt. You think he's going to take the belt off so he can slap the Or it looks like he's going to piss on the kid. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but he goes, off. I'm just tightening my belt one one notch so that I don't feel the hunger pains, just like your mother and sister are going to have to do. Because I guess that whole meal was the only thing that they're going to ever eat. So, uh, backtracking a little bit here, as they're going on the trip, meanwhile, the girl, we the older... We forgot about the dream yeah. sequence. Yes. The, okay, the, the older sister's... We'll get to the dream sequence. Yes. But the older sister's boyfriend somehow procures an RV, and he and three of his friends, who are pretty much the three stooges, are driving the RV and basically following the family to Nilbog. And that's not established as being yeah. strange in any way. Um, and yeah, because the boyfriend was supposedly supposed to go on this trip with him, but he didn't show up in time. So the family's just in the van, and the dad's all angry, talking about how the boyfriend is terrible for disappointing his girlfriend and not showing up on time. And then we find the boyfriend and his friends in an RV following the family, trying to get up to Nilmar. So, so the subplot that keeps getting cut to throughout the film is. They pull up and are apparently staying in this RV in a field outside of yeah, town just or a something. Field. And they're looking to get laid. Um, <laughs> well, some, loose some, women. some of them are, yes. but they're looking for, as they say, loose women. Liberal uh, or liberated women. Un- unattached women. Yes. Um, but the boyfriend of, of, of the older sister and the one friend have this strange, like, homoerotic kind of. Yeah, they, they, they end up waking up in a bed together. There's, there's a shot where one of them's leaving to get groceries because they're all out of food in the RV fridge, and it cuts to the boyfriend, and he's in bed with the other guy, and both of them are apparently naked. Yeah. And it that's never naked. established as being strange or they're just sleeping together. due to a lack of space or something. Really it close. just established as yeah, being... Yeah, because it was a big RV, and there's only four of them in it. <laughs> it's like the bus size RV, and there's only four of these teenage boys in there, and somehow two of them end up sleeping on, like, the fold-out couch... Together, naked. So, so, so the one friend gets sick of waiting for loose women, and he sets off out into the woods smoking his cigarette yeah. and sees some woman who... Looks like a rape victim. She appears to be a rape victim. And so he decides to chase her, because that's what you do with a rape victim, <laughs> he, is you chase him and, down and tackle And then he tackles her, yes. So then the, the goblins show up, and she was apparently running from the goblins. And, and he decides just to walk up to this group of goblins, which... Have spears and stuff. So he walks up to a hostile group of people he doesn't know, or goblins he doesn't know, with weapons, and decides he's going to act all tough when he's like two inches taller than them as it is. <laughs> the goblins appear to be played by either children or midgets. Yeah, children wearing, or midgets wearing fat suits and... The hats. costumes consist of basically a burlap sack <laughs> and then a Halloween mask. It reminds me of the, the uh, scarecrow from The Wizard of Oz where he keeps stuffing stuff into his stomach. As it falls out, although, and he just has a big fat stomach. Although the Scarecrow was a much better production yes, value. Yes. Much better bang for their buck. Yes. But, uh, much better actor. This guy wanders into the woods with the rape victim. Uh, troll or Goblins apparently don't seem to care that much that he just insulted Shelter, them and yeah. walks off with the girl. They take refuge in this strange brick church well, thing. Well, first, first the, the, the Goblins stab him with one of the spears. Right, he gets stabbed. Yeah, and, and then, then they fine. decide just, yeah, then the goblins decide, oh yeah, we stabbed him, that's enough. So we're going to let him walk away. 